I'm gonna call. I'm gonna write a note and say it's gonna be called "How Andrew Can Be a Better Person." <laughs> <laughs> the list of ways to improve. Andrew. <laughs> See. I can't improve when I never have an app for that list, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It's too many characters for my alarm app. So. I'll forget. <laughs> what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast, but it's a bonus episode this time. You can tell because we have new people and I'm in a different chair. Oh, I didn't even realize this would collide. <laughs> That's new. Okay. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And we're joined by David Pierce. Hello. Thank you for uh, thank you for hopping on with us. Thanks for having me. It's fun to like be here and do this with my internet friends. In we've, person. We've done it before, but at Apple Campus, weirdly enough, that was this is first time. This is cooler. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, this is this is cozier. Uh, if you don't already remember, David Pierce, host of The Verge Cast, uh, editor at large at The Verge, fellow productivity app nerd. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. I hesitate to call this an intervention, <laughs> but it's kind of how it feels. You waited till right now to use that word. A little bit, <laughs> yeah. So on the right side of the table for our audio listeners, David and I uh, have been not just using, but experimenting with, playing with, trying, implementing. Ruining our lives with. All of these productivity <laughs> apps for the past couple of years, probably a little too much. But on the other side of the aisle, Andrew is either way smarter than us or, or has a bunch of unlocked potential. Ruining his life on the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> Andrew uses uh, the Alarm app. We've talked about this mm -hmm. as literally a task manager reminders. Like that's the maximalist. That's as far as it goes, right? Pretty much. I mean, we have Notion for work. We but do. Even sometimes with that, if I really need something to get done, yeah. I, I put an alarm for it. Yeah. So I think uh, I think this is our opportunity to like expose you to the the world that you could live in of of like second brain software. Yeah, I think the goal for the end of this episode is one of you should convince me to use an app. And if I get convinced, I will use it for we'll see. And if we can't, Marquez and I have to both live our lives out of the alarm app. Oh, no. oh that would <laughs> and that I cannot do. I yeah, I respect yeah. my job too much. I feel like this whole company would crumble to the ground if that happens. <laughs> I just will not get anything done. This is something actually my dad has said before, but I say the same thing. Like if you tell me to do something and in that moment I don't write it down, trust me I'm not going to remember. So that I I'll start my my opening <laughs> my opening convincing argument with the human brain is an amazing computer, right? It's it's very powerful. It has incredible AI. Obviously, it has a neural engine. It has an optical image processor. It has all these things that are amazing for a computer. But it has one critical flaw: the memory only is one fallible. That's the yeah. only flaw with only the human flaw. brain as a computer. Okay, the memory is fallible, and so you could think you remember to do something. You could tell yourself to remember something but it may not remember. You may lose those bits and bytes. And so the reason that I'm so into this software augmenting my brain is because that memory is not infallible. That will stay, that will work, and then I can sort of plug it into my brain as like a puzzle piece as uh, the way to not, as the way to complete myself as a computer, if that makes any sense. Am I making any sense? No, it makes total sense. And I think I would just add two things. Yeah. One is that, uh, do you ever hear people talk about decision fatigue, like why, Yep. Oh, like a Barack Obama wore the same suit mm -hmm. every day or why Mark Zuckerberg always wears gray t-shirts or whatever. Well, he's a robot, but... <laughs> That's where I'm going with okay. this. <laughs> We're all robots. No, I think the, the point is that uh, there is, at least I experience this in a huge way, this feeling of like, I'm supposed to be doing something or I was supposed to have remembered something or something is going on and there's just this like latent, constant anxiety of... <laughs> thinking about all of the stuff happening uh and you and i andrew are both new parents mm -hmm. so there's even more of that because are, i haven't is. slept in forever <laughs> and i have to remember to like keep my child alive so for me it's it's not just like having a place to offload all of that stuff it's having a place that i know that it is mm -hmm. uh and i think like i always think about my own brain as like do you have a drawer full of like thumb drives and memory cards and <laughs> yeah, memory sticks yeah. and it's there's just a thousand of them and you're like i know the thing i need is on one of these <laughs> but my options are either i'm not either i'm not even positive what i'm looking for but there's something in here that i need <laughs> one of these which things, is a terrible yeah. outcome uh -huh. or i know what i need and it's on one of these 
but what do I do with it? Okay. And I feel like Fair. my entire product productivity journey has been trying to solve those two problems. Yeah. Yeah. That's and my own that. brain is both of those things at the same yeah. time. That's fair. I'm, I'm going to interject here and say nothing either of you have said. I disagree with yet. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's I would say, and I f would say I have these same feelings as both of you do in mm -hmm. a lot of these senses. Okay. You're just more comfortable in your chaos than we are. I don't even know if comfortable is the term. Maybe thriving in anxiety <laughs> works sometimes. Um, wow. But uh, okay. And it's funny you mention being a new dad because arguably the only productivity I app I have outside of my alarms app is the Huckleberry app, mm -hmm. which is like the very newborn, like I need to make sure she's eating enough and pooping consistently and sleeping and taking naps. So that is one thing that Claire and I together are consistently I'm logging things in that all the time. So, so maybe that is that is my gateway drug into the life of productivity. <laughs> that needs an ocean integration. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is really interesting. Okay. I think uh, what I thought would be really fun was to give you some hypotheticals. Some hypothetical okay. situations that I could propose that would maybe convince you that it would be more likely that you would get the thing done if you had a better tool to do so. Because sure. from what I'm hearing, you're not against maybe trying some productivity apps or... I don't know. Yeah. It, you don't necessarily need to dive into the deep end with it because there's all kinds of, there's so many, first of all. Yeah. But they also all have different pros and cons and different capabilities and different weaknesses. But you're at least down to hear I'm how they could plug in. I'm down to hear. I'm open. The more I've thought about this episode, the more open I've become because okay. at first I said, Marquez, I'm not doing this. It's going to be boring when I do nothing at the end of it because I'm still just going to use the alarm app. Um, but you know what? I got a new phone, so it kind of feels like new phone, new me. And like I maybe it's screen. time to add some things and it deleted all of my alarms. So I don't have any of those so, anymore. To that point, though, this is one of the things I was wondering mm -hmm. for you is um, it's not like you don't spend all of your time with somebody who talks about this stuff incessantly uh, <laughs> no i hear it maybe that's part of the reason uh, why i haven't made well, the so jump what I was yet. wondering yeah. is like is it do you feel like the system you have like works and why screw it up in the name of just some cool app that might not solve your problems or like what what has kept you in the alarm app world all this time i'll be honest it's stubbornness okay it's not like no i don't think i'm running smoothly i think if you had the opportunity to call my wife right now she would be like no he does not do all the things <laughs> that he says he will do or i okay. ask him to do so yeah. i'm consistently forgetting things i mean if it's super super important i will i will remember it or it will be in the alarm app and that's how i'll remember it but like there's only so much I'm going to put in there. And there are definitely times where I get to the point of like, this needed to be done by Friday. And I've had an entire week to do it. And there was plenty of time to do it. But, you know, there may also be an my element. Mind. <laughs> there may be an element of overexposure as well, because I've talked about it being like almost, what did I call it? Like my Your toxic, toxic trait. Toxic trait. Mm -hmm. yeah. I call it, yeah, where I, I will, I will, I will have everything I need in one productivity app, which I, I literally did this two days ago. I have both the apps in my doc, which is hilarious. Uh, I've used a to-do list app, a calendar app, and an email app and Notion for however many years, and I'll see a new one. And the problem is the websites are always so pretty. Oh, they're so good. They're always so good. And they're all animated so wild. They just make you feel feelings. They're gorgeous. Great. And I feel like if I could just have this in my life, everything would be even better than it already is. Not yes. that I'm missing anything, but there will be one or two cool features where I'm like, that, I want that. And then I'll dump my entire life out of one into the other one. And then several days later, I'll be like, why did I do this? This is missing the things that I like about the mm -hmm. other thing. Even though I like that, I have to move back. And now I'm, I'm like constantly doing this dance between apps. Adam actually has a little bit of the same bug. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm outing you over there, but thanks. <laughs> we do a little bit of the same dance. So I, I'm gonna interject right there. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say by the end of this episode, I need convincing on something that will be my app and just be my app because that sounds terrible. And yeah. I will n never do that. I am <laughs> you, you so either have stubborn. to enjoy it literally for its own sake. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the, the one thing, I, I had an old boss who watched me do this a hundred times and he was like, oh, <laughs> every time you do it, you're actually like going through all of your old notes and reevaluating all the stuff you're working on. That's I was true. like, I don't know that that's actually true, but it made me feel better <laughs> <laughs> that this is my way of sort of taking stock of my system and all that. Mm -hmm. um, it's not. No one should do what Marquez is doing. Yeah, I, it is not. It's delightful and unhealthy and unproductive. I and appreciate probably. you guys are have all the viewpoints of all these different apps, but if I pick an app and I use it by the end of this episode, if there becomes a time where I'm like, I don't want to use this, that looks better, I will never make that switch. It is okay. too annoying for me to do that. 
the, partially one of the reasons I've never switched to an iPhone with ample op- opportunity here is I've tried to set one up before and in the setup process, I just go, I don't feel like doing this. And then I never use it. So, so because this makes me think we need to put Andrew in an app that is very stable, stable. and straightforward and not likely to do you know what this one is? sort of explode. And of course I know what that one is. I think that's one of the <laughs> high top candidates Please. right now. Just I think I have I have three in mind. Okay. That are, and that's one of them. What are your can I see uh, your three real quick? Well, so I'll just this I'll just intimidating write them down. on okay. this side. Yep. yep. This is the podcast version of We Can Fix Him. <laughs> mm. Claire put them up to this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's that's yeah. The, I have it's the top two that I feel pretty good about, the and then the third one is, one is kind of my wild card. Stable, yes, just because of who makes it. Okay, but Do it's you, also potentially the one that is the most things. I I know why, and I think we should try to explain it. <laughs> yeah, but we'll yeah. Now I know how audio listeners feel. How confusing <laughs> okay. this is. No, no. Do you want me to kind of go over maybe like? a day, a week, a month of what I do, and maybe like that might help your guys' thought process on this? I think this might work the same way, which okay. is I have increasingly complex hypotheticals. Okay. And you can tell me how you would tackle them. Okay. Okay. Hypothetical number one. Sure. Claire says, Andrew, don't forget to take out the trash on Friday morning. What do you do? Wait, you just unlock something. That's the only reoccurring task in my calendar app is take out the trash okay. on Thursday. Okay. That's a good answer. And it comes up on my watch Okay, every time I'm sitting on the couch is it Thursday a night. task in your calendar app, app or is it a calendar event calendar in your calendar event. app? That's a great question. This is very this important. Is, this is huge. <laughs> okay, is <laughs> let's important. see. I, I'm i guessing it's a calendar event. You probably have it then oh. either the night before when you need to put things out or that morning. If if memory serves, you're a, you're, you have both, right? I have both. I have one as a task the night before, and then I have the calendar event the next day. Okay. Of when it actually gets collected. Which do you follow more often? I follow the task because the calendar event is syncing to a GCAL provided by my town's website that oh, is boy. not always accurate. Because uh, the holiday actually. weeks, all the weirdness. It's supposed to be up to date, but I've just found it's. I live on a corner. I think it might be the other block. This podcast is going to be 16 hours. <laughs> this <laughs> is prepare everyone. Kind of this. I, I'm here trying to figure out if it's a task or an event, and Marquez is connecting to his <laughs> local government with this. <laughs> Marquez hacked into the mayor's <laughs> office to get the schedule. Yeah. It is an event. Okay. okay. And it is, sorry, can I see that one more time? You can. It is the Very night intense. before. It the is night, the night the before. The night before. Okay, it, perfect. I'm, I ain't getting up in the morning to do that. Totally fine. <laughs> yeah. So, But that, that works for you. you it works for me. It works every, that. yeah, okay. I have not missed a trash day. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, so the calendar app. So, part two, hypothetical. Claire says, <laughs> now when you're taking the trash out, make sure that you break down the cardboard and put it to the left of the plastic or they won't take it. We only have one recycling bin. This is the hypothetical. Okay. <laughs> I'm not good at hypotheticals, apparently. So you need to remember both to do this task at this time and, and something specific to do right. in I'll, this task. I'll give you the perfect example, which is something we found as an old alarm app on my phone the other day when we were talking about this, where I had an alarm that said, money on trash, because for the holidays, I was tipping the trash people and I needed to bring out the trash cans and also put the like card for them. So into you set it. an alarm to do that. And I did it I I actually in I a did. third party alarm app, which is deranged. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Interesting. Um, also, and wait, I did what have did to do actually say, Andrew. It said monkey on trash. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I. So it took a minute. So if there's autocorrect, yeah. that would be a huge benefit of whatever Fair. we're doing. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, and that was something I did the next morning because I didn't I didn't want to leave money on the trash can overnight. So you set that alarm for the morning that they Yeah, so I would, at my, the end of my driveway, I would know to pull it out of my car and put it so on the So in this hypothetical, if there was a specific thing you had to do with the cardboard to the left of the plastic, yeah. you would set maybe an alarm. Correct. At the same time that you're taking out the trash, uh, that tells you what to do. That says cardboard left plastic. Yeah, like it would essentially be, yeah, at the same time. Okay. 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 I already have Heart- so much anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> right? So far, it's checking out. Coordinating the yeah. alarms. It's. Yeah, I can't wait for in a month, you're like, how's it going? And I'm like, there's so much trash in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Piles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Part three. Again, pure hypothetical. But how would you tackle this? You now need to do this every Monday and Thursday night during the summer, but every Sunday and Wednesday night during the winter. If I'm being honest, I would probably just have 
two calendar recurring apps and okay. just ignore one of them during the summer and ignore one of them during the winter. Remember, I've not had to do that. More. Maybe I just have sweet trash people and they always come on Fridays no matter what. But in that scenario, if it were changing in those yeah, I don't know. Can you Would do you that put, just like, on Google Calendar? Summer in parentheses. That's a good them? point. Yeah. Man, maybe I should just have you on speed dial and call you instead. <laughs> I mean, no, this is not a what should you do. Okay, but like yeah. I'm curious. Like you no, have no, two uh, things that say take out the trash and you just remember which one was the I probably what I would probably do is I would you said it's like Friday, summer, Monday, winter. I would mm -hmm. probably just do reoccurring every Friday. And then once it hit winter and I either missed one of those or realized I would just delete that event and then probably start <laughs> yeah. the winter event. Okay. I'm trying to be honest here, Adam. Stop no, making fun of me. I'm <laughs> making you realize that Andrew is a much more like capable, functional person Very than attractive. I am because I... my life would collapse <laughs> <laughs> in what you're describing. <laughs> yeah. I think kind of, but yeah. that's also kind of the like why it's a little pathetic that I'm not using one of these because I'm capable of doing all of these things. Yeah. I'm capable. I'm more than tech savvy to be very into a productivity and just think app. you'd be like president of the united states by now if you, you know maybe i'm just trying now. to give everyone a head start here <laughs> i just don't want to so don't want to win too hard okay here's one more you get an email with all the instructions by the way this is 2013 we play on the hammerhead still oh, you get an email did we have to we'll play on <laughs> okay. team. you get an email with all the instructions and your itinerary for a hammerheads trip that we have this upcoming weekend mm -hmm. and in the email is a google docs link that says don't fill out this form until saturday morning when we're getting on the bus cool. so again it's an email with a weekend itinerary and a link in the email of a form to fill out that morning i mean without trying to be funny one I would forget. But if Same. I like thought to myself 100% like I need to do this, mm -hmm. that would be so I need to like know what my itinerary is. Mm -hmm. And I need to fill the alarm app goes on the fill out the form okay. a thousand percent because that's the thing I need Saturday to do. Morning. Alarm app Just Saturday morning. Form. Do you put the Google Doc link in, no, the, in alarm? the alarm? No, it would just say fill out form. do form okay hammerhead and then form. you see that do you form, remember yeah. that there's an email somewhere that you're supposed to remember yeah that i'll be able to remember okay um and then the itinerary part it would i mean i probably would never put it i would never actually put, if i needed to know i would put parts in my calendar but like other than that man i'm realizing my entire life's calendar is just texting my wife to see what we're doing this weekend whoa that's a different productivity. App She's, right there. This is going to be her favorite pod. This might be the first episode she listens to. <laughs> this is good. This is all very good. Okay. I, I do, that's a, you, you're bringing that up. I want my personal calendar to be anything. Mm -hmm. I, I need that. I need that for myself, I think. Um, that would be super important. I feel like, especially now with all of the hobbies that I have and now also having a child, I need to be way more organized so I can find those time slots to when I can do the things that I love to do. Yeah. That, are just me or like meeting up with people so is your wife a calendar keeper uh yeah not like super intense but like way better than i am okay. and like she actually knows when we're doing everything okay so yes so i guess the the idea behind my hypotheticals mm -hmm. is there are certain productivity apps that try to uh merge certain things and to have certain features embedded that help these levels of complex complexities feel simple okay um i think my favorite is a to-do list app where all I do is when I need to do something or remember something, all I do is open the to-do list app and set the time and date. And the more complex the task is, the more I can dive into the features of the to-do list app okay. to have either recurring tasks, subtasks, descriptions, uh, offsetting days and weeks and things like that, like all sorts of flexibility inside of remembering to give me the notification to tell me to do the thing. Okay. To do list 101 for me. There is 10 bazillion options. For there this. are 10 bazillion options. The good news is most apps do that thing you just described pretty well. Yes. Okay. The idea of just like, I need to open this thing, I need to write a thing down, it needs to Although, answer the question. The key there is you need natural language processing yeah. because being able to type, take out trash. 7 a.m. every Friday is so much yeah. easier than opening a picker and tapping a yes, date and okay. tapping a thing. And, and and in that range of natural language processing, gigantic spectrum of quality. And then, mm -hmm. so, because that's the first thing Marquez just said there. And I like, when Marquez was saying that he puts this stuff in his app and then it's like this on this day at this time, I was just like, 
I'm already thinking of scrolling through all those stupid things. And I was, I'm like, I'm bored of this already. I don't, I don't see myself doing it. So that is yeah. huge. What you're saying, does that also work for like voice input? So like yes. voice to text and then, yeah. It's a little you're, iffier in that case. Just well, hey, there, are, there are kind of more Pot places it can go sideways. Fair. Sometimes voice recognition is not amazing. For sure. Sometimes the, you know, speech to text is not amazing. Mm -hmm. Like it can get a little wonky, but the idea of being able to, do that in literally one step from I need to say a sentence out loud and it does a thing on a date in my to-do list app is very possible. That I will say to be to be totally honest, the thing that I find most bizarre about the alarms thing is exactly what you just described. It uh -huh. is an awful user interface for what you're trying to do. It's, it's, it's nice tons of simple, scrolling. Man. Everything looks the same. <laughs> it's sorted by time of day, which is bananas. Okay. Uh, oh, so by the way, there's two types of alarm apps people I realized recently. There is people who have a new task for every alarm and then they scroll and there is 800 alarms on their phone. And then- I draw a line, Marquez. <laughs> deleting the alarm app and renaming it oh. every single time you have a new task. Well- Not the alarm app, the alarm. The alarm, the deleting- I think I'm in between. The alarm? Okay. I'm not- Renaming it's alarms? The, yeah, yeah, just rename and change the time of the alarm. So I, I mean, this phone doesn't show up, but my last one had maybe five all the time. It's like my actual- wake up alarm actually i don't even use my wake up alarm i use it on my watch now so like there's five alarms and it's just like this one is uh you know i have to remember to put something in my bag in the morning because i want to take it to work and then it's like oh if i had one other thing i have to the next one i'm just going to erase whatever that was which is you know kind of fun sometimes when you're like oh what was i doing and how long ago did i need to remember to mm -hmm. like take this box out of the trunk of my car and mm -hmm. then look at it and be like wow that box is still in the trunk of my car <laughs> um but okay so yeah that's where we're at i really yeah. like what you're talking about with a very simple type this out it, okay. it feels to me like the do you know they say you can just type whatever the hell you want in google and it'll figure out just like mm -hmm. what's that song that goes la 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 and it's like oh it's creed higher yeah, natural. and then you're like <laughs> yeah that's awesome higher. it is that's, that's sort of, <laughs> yeah. so yeah i like this already i okay. like the, i like the direction okay. we're going okay this yeah. is good we're yeah we're so that's we're so that's there. one genre so the to-do list app can i can i interject and maybe you're gonna ask this question so you can tell me and we can just go further can any of those see what somebody is texting me and be like, actually, I think this happens already in Google Messages. If Claire says like, we're going to Abby and Grover's house Saturday at seven, can I just like? No, but that's a really good feature that if I saw that in one, I would think about ending all oh, of the other I stuff. Would I would pour my life into that app. Wow, one second. I'm already the CEO of a task app. <laughs> actually. Wow, okay. Okay, so. But one thing to that yeah. point, uh, things like, Gmail are actually pretty good at that. And yes, they're okay, starting because... to get pretty sophisticated at understanding like, oh, this is about a thing at a time. Do you want to add that to your calendar? Okay. Uh, yeah. And I think the, the one other piece of this I was going to add is, I think, I do think we're talking about a to-do list app. I'm increasingly convinced okay. we're talking about a to-do list yeah. app. But I think one way you can think about a lot of this stuff also is to do it in your calendar. And there are a bunch yes. of interesting ideas about calendars, which I know you guys have talked about a bunch on this show. But the idea of basically just letting your calendar run your life mm -hmm. and it, it ends up being fewer things because you need a calendar anyway and like events in a to-do list don't actually work very well uh yeah. so like there is a world in which you can consolidate a lot of this into your calendar but the sort of ease of adding stuff and making yeah, yeah, it make yeah. sense is not quite there with calendar. and i'll just say for work i am like chronically in our google calendar almost to the, like i sometimes i wonder if that's why my personal calendar is so bad because our work calendar has so much in it and i'm just like I'm so much more focused on that right now. And like, this is everything. Work calendar. Um, so, so like, yeah, I know how to work Google Calendar pretty well, except for maybe that I put an event instead of a task. I'm still not sure if that was the right or the wrong no, answer when you guys asked me event. that before. Right. Um, so like, yeah, chronically in the work app, in the work calendar, if there was some way where it could be like, you're at home, maybe these are our priorities now versus mm -hmm. these at work are our priorities. Yes. Hey, we're gonna take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more from David Pierce. Support for Waveform comes from Coda. 
So are you having trouble getting your remote team organized and on the same page? Or for that matter, is your own desktop looking a little chaotic with a lot of tools and tabs? If any of that sounds familiar, then you may be interested in Coda. So Coda is an all-in-one collaborative workspace designed to bring teams and tools together for a more organized workday. So Coda blends the flexibility of docs, the structure of spreadsheets, and the power of applications, and the intelligence of AI to make work, well, less work. So with Coda's extensive planning capabilities, you can stay aligned by managing your planning cycles in one location while setting and measuring objectives for key results with full visibility across teams. Plus, you can access hundreds of templates and get inspired by others in Coda's gallery. So if you want a platform that empowers your team to collaborate effectively and focus on shared goals, you can get started with Coda today for free. So you can head over to coda.io slash wave. That's C-O-D-A dot I-O slash wave to get started for free. So coda.io forward slash wave. Okay, so I will say the to-do list app seems very like a high candidate. The, the one downside that I find to-do list apps is events don't really work as well as tasks. Yep. So then there's the calendar app stuff. There are lots of calendar apps. Lots of them have various plugins and UIs and things they can do. They all more or less look the same because the calendar is a calendar. Mm -hmm. But the way you're organizing, I need to take out the trash at a certain time. I will set an event so that I remember to do this thing at this time. You can also do it that way. And there's a bunch of calendar apps. And my issue with that is not every task that I do has a specific time that I'm going to be doing it. Okay. It's almost more like a hierarchy yeah. of things that I'll be doing during the day and not necessarily time. This is you and I have the same problem, which is I am constantly flitting between a to-do list app, which is very good for tasks and not very good for things that have to happen at a very specific time and often have other information associated with them. Or a calendar, which is really great for that stuff, but for like a thing that I just need to remember to do sometime in the next couple of days, calendars yeah. are awful. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. And like I feel like there's even the like this needs to be done by the end of the day. This needs to be done by the end of the week. Mm -hmm. This just needs to be done whenever you're ready. And then like this needs this is this exact date on this calendar. Right. So, yeah. Then there are the hybrids. <laughs> yes. There are some apps. I hate how you understand everything he's saying. At one point, I want you to be like, what are you talking about? No. You're like, the hybrids no. Hybrids caused me so much pain. <laughs> it's it's, it's that meme of like, he's thinking about other women. It's like the, <laughs> the hybrid task apps. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, uh -huh. So there are uh -huh. apps that understand this dichotomy with tasks and events and will try to help you bring them both to one place. So Adam was trying Amy earlier. There are other apps like this where, and one of them that I'll suggest later kind of lets you drag tasks onto the calendar as you're going about your day to sort of move through things. I feel like just by the way you're talking about this, this is, I'm going to compare this to a two in one where it's just not as good as either of them. That's basically right. <laughs> okay. I think that is basically right. Yeah. I think there are, there are, this is either the perfect puzzle piece to fit or it's just going to cause you pain okay. and you don't even have to worry about it. But there are, it depends on kind of like how many tasks you do and sure. what style you have. But there are some apps where it's literally like, all right, on the side over here is your to do list, on the side over here is your calendar. And if you live through like blocks of time in your calendar and you have a to-do list, you'd be like, all right, drag this to three o'clock, drag this to four o'clock and you get a new email and it shows up in your task app and you drag it over and you just sort of lay out the day in blocks of tasks. Okay. It may not be something you're interested in. Do you know the concept of, of time blocking or time boxing? People call it. I mean, I've heard other people do it. That, it's that kind sounds of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't very, know. I, I, I'm kind of with you. Like my thing about that is all of these apps that try to do both are very opinionated mm -hmm. about kind of the best way to manage your life. Yeah. And they're probably right in a lot of cases, right? Like the idea of saying, I need to do 10 things today. I have eight hours. One of these things is going to take me six hours. I'm probably not going to get them all done. Let me go schedule other things somewhere else. Yeah. Is probably like a Fair. healthy, safe, correct <laughs> way to live. Mm -hmm. But I just can't do it. Like life is too yeah, yeah, yeah. messy and all exactly. over the place and priorities change and the idea of like constantly rewriting my calendar all day to mm -hmm. match what I'm actually it doing would be so much just drives me nuts. Yeah. And so I think that's the problem I've always run into is it's like if I want to sort of live by this thing's system, mm -hmm. it works. Like Amy is a perfect example of that. Yeah. Like beautiful app, really interesting ideas, but if you don't sort of use it the way it is meant to be used, it will cause 
friction Man. pain. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it sounds like it's kind of the reason for a task cap is because of the anxiety of multiple things hanging over your head. But if you go too far and then the task cap is now causing you more anxiety over. than the actual tasks and stuff right. like that yeah. is like. And I also that is I think we are landing pretty quickly at a place where you are not interested in like spending a lot of time managing your tasks. No. Like, like there's a, there are things we could set you up with that are like incredibly powerful project management that, tools with lots of subtasks and projects. And I can tell you, we can tell you all about the second. I'm brain a free flowing kind of guy, man. <laughs> done in the five stages. I, I feel like you just want a list of things that tells you what needs to happen when it needs to happen. Yeah, think of yeah, me as awesome. like the deadhead task man. Like we're just very free flowing. We're just like, yeah. oh, if my day I'm getting off of the couch and walking around, it's like, oh, that this feels like a perfect time for a task. Let's get something sure. done. You just open no, the app and there it is. There what it is, do you yeah. do for things that need to happen at some point in the next couple of days? You're like, oh, I need to take that box to FedEx. It's, it doesn't really matter when I do it, but I have to do it yeah. soon. It's almost always like I get home from work on Friday and I just think to myself, like, these are the things that need to be done by the, the end of the weekend. And you then just think Sunday at five o'clock <laughs> happens and then I'm like, I, I think it to myself just, and then I just go about my life. I just remember. <laughs> and then I do it all Sunday at five o'clock pretty much. Okay. So or, never, okay. okay, actually, I'll say this. What I'm realizing I is wait. That Andrew forgets lots of stuff, but doesn't realize he forgot it because he didn't write any of it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's it. one of the things you're talking about in all of this is like, if I if I have that app where it's like I have to do eight things today and I only do six, it's like then I have to admit that I didn't do that thing at the end <laughs> of the day. Okay, which is a little anxiety inducing, yeah, but maybe it's the res- is like a- maybe it's the responsibility I need. I- I'll say rather than leave it till the end of the weekend, it's more of I sit down and I figure everything I need to do. And then I wait till that moment that hits where I'm like, I'm productive right now. I feel productive. Okay. A lot of the times in the summer, that's like, I'm going to go mow the lawn. And then once I finish mowing the lawn, I'm like, I'm just in that mood where I'm going to get stuff done. And I usually find myself like getting everything done very quickly. As far as you know. Except and, for all the things you forgot well, <laughs> you didn't write it down. <laughs> you know, in a pessimistic world, maybe. In an optimistic world, Andrew's killing exactly. it. And it's yeah. he's ready for some Valorant. I love yeah. this for you. Um, no, but I, I will say that, like, and it's something that also does kind of drive Claire crazy because, like, if we are, if it's Monday and we're having people over on Saturday, mm. she is, like, throughout the week doing all of the things that need to be done for there. And my things that have to get done are waiting till that time where I'm like, yeah, I could get a bunch of stuff done right now and I'd rather just knock all of it out in mm-hmm. one to two hours. And then it almost always is Claire's like, I'm upset at how you did every single thing you needed to do and it was there, but like it was causing her anxiety through mm-hmm. the week. And like, I do feel bad about that, but <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I, I do wind up getting my stuff done. It just seems I'm in times where I just want to sit and do absolutely nothing and times where I'm productive. When I'm productive, I'm productive and when I'm not, I'm gonna look at that app and I'll maybe like tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. So this is good. Yeah. So we also what you we need a, a thing that doesn't yell at you if you True. don't get something done that day. And I will say, like, this is not the app we're gonna tell you to use. Okay. But the app things, which Marquez and I both fall occasionally yeah. in love with, uh, <laughs> one thing it does that I really like is if you have you have a list of stuff to do today, and if you don't get it done, it doesn't mark it red or punt it to overdue. It just keeps it in today. And so it's just like this is a thing I mean to accomplish. There. Okay. And it's not it doesn't get mad that you didn't do it. Lots of other things are like your tasks are overdue. You know, and this is not like, like a that. Postpone that's app. It's like you want to click this. Yeah, you want you want to postpone. Yeah, it's like, oh, <laughs> are you sure? You had a bad day today, huh? <laughs> right. I'm like, uh, it, yeah. it's funny you bring that up because like that, in a sense, I was thinking about if I continue to just not doing it. Like, let's say it goes from like this is your app and it's in a green color and it's like I didn't do that today and tomorrow it's yellow and then it's like mm. the next day it's orange. It's like. I don't know if I would want that, but if it just kept adding to the next one and then I saw that list get longer, that's like a less sure. intense version of like, sure. oh, I do have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. I don't know if you heard Ellis's idea for a Vision Pro I was task just app bring that up. where it is when you're in the Vision Pro and you have things to do, depending on how <laughs> intense they are, they start chasing you faster <laughs> but in the Vision Pro. So like taking out the trash it has to be Thursday night and it's Thursday at five. It's like it is a giant but monster the following you. They chase you is dependent yeah. on their urgency. I love yeah. it. So like something. So let's not get to like there. Sort of slowly walk. <laughs> <laughs> take out the trash, just like hauling. <laughs> that would be really cool. So let's take it a few steps down from that. Okay. But I, I like this okay. idea of just can adding to the next day or like yeah because then that would get to that point where i'm like oh 
I just did something. I'm in one of those moods right now. Let's get stuff done. And right. I, I'll just be like, all right, let's check this. List right. Out. And in that moment, it's helpful to have, here's all the list of stuff that just yeah. sort of needs to happen. And you can, it's not mad at you for not having done it yet, but when you want to do it, it's all right there cool. for you. Yeah. Dig that. Okay. All right. Great idea. Good. Okay. Yeah. I have one more variable to throw at you. Sure. Let's see. Um, you, what was the app you mentioned with like keeping the alarm the app. stack? The kid stuff. <laughs> Huckleberry. Huckleberry. A okay. third party <laughs> alarm. Yeah. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> Do you care about your thing? Because you mentioned you deleted, you switched phones. Do you phones, care about your, your alarm app? <laughs> your alarm app, all your stuff disappeared, and you have a new phone. Do you care about your tasks? syncing between devices so mm. you can check them anywhere yeah that would be awesome especially for work at like my my desktop or on my phone because even in here there are days where i realize it's four o'clock i'm like i haven't sat at my computer the entire day right. everything i've done is based off my phone all the meetings i've looked at and stuff like that or like notifications sent to my watch like i only this is only because you have really a, important notifications yeah you have um, a unique setup and i got told this is weird all the time but you have an android phone and a mac so like a Mac at work, a Windows computer. So, at home. so a Windows machine and a Mac okay. and mm -hmm. an Android phone. That narrows things down substantially. It does. Okay. okay, it does. Cool. We there like are that. so many that have a beautiful website and an awesome GTD method and an. A what does GTD mean? Getting things done method and like <laughs> a whole bunch of cool things about it. And then I go to try it, and it's like this app is in beta. It's iPhone only. Or this app yeah, is that's... iPhone and Mac only, and sorry about your Android phone. And it's mm -hmm. just enough for me to go, I can't try it yet. I, I will say you don't have to worry about my Windows computer much because that is very specifically like I play games on it. I stream on it. I do very little on that, especially yeah. now that my work computer is a laptop that I can bring home. Right. Do you know? And it needs to every morning remind me that if I brought this home, I need to bring it back to work or else I don't have anything to work on. Okay. Which I, sure. I've only had this for like two months. I've done that already. Okay. Um, so yes. So that's, definitely that is least, a problem. At least Mac OS and Android could Correct. be nice because a mm -hmm. lot of them will have a web app and it's like you have to remember to open it. But just like having an app. Yep. For I'm each scared nice. to tell you that I use the Google Calendar on my computer in that's, a tab. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's, and I'm I'm that. willing to go outside of that, but okay. you, I need the help to to get there. So <laughs> why don't we go? through our top candidates that we think would match. Can I throw one more wrench in this Absolutely. potentially? And maybe this won't change anything. I'm realizing when I say that I like getting these productivity like hours or moods or whatever, I also am very good at not just being like, I have to take everything out of my office and then I have to replace the sockets in the nursery and then I have to clean the downstairs. It is like, I am halfway through getting the stuff out of my office. And then when I'm bringing some of that stuff to my room, I pass the nurse here. I'm like, oh, I can replace one of those sockets. And then um, so there are lots there are of so many listeners who are diagnosing you with various things <laughs> as you explain this. <laughs> That's uh, Dr. Mike's coming in next week to just finish that off. But uh, yeah. but yes, there's so there is definitely a level of me being okay. pretty scatterbrained, which I think this will help. This will help. Um, and I don't know if that changes that much. If I think about it, if I just think of those tasks, I'm never None of those are finished, so I know they still have to happen. But just throwing it out there. But you never you run know, out maybe. of RAM? Not that I know like of. Like you're doing task one, and then you pass by task two, and then you go, oh, I start do task two, and then you start doing task two, and then you see task three needs being done, and you start task three. Do you ever get so far down the rabbit hole that you forgot about task one, and you just need to just put it all down somewhere so you make sure you do all the things? If you ask the, the open <laughs> socket in the nursery... Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I guess, so I think that's, it does get to that point. Yeah. That's, that's good to know. All right. Wait, I have one more question. Yes. Sure. Are you a note taker? Um, like you're saying like in a meeting or something? Or, Not even in a meeting, but like if you have, if you have stuff to do this weekend, you're like the, the sockets. Do you also want with that? Oh, like thing you what have to do, to like be? here are, here's a link to the Home Depot website for the thing I'm going to buy. And here's the size. Yes. Like, are you a, do you want to consolidate all that? I stuff? use keep. Okay. Oh, um, okay. oh, keep. Sorry, this is I'm sort of, this is, it's, this worried is to show you my I thought, but I, I'm interested. Okay, alarm app and keep. Okay, my keep. Keep is very good. My keep is a keep does not mess. Get love actually, from it's for everyone who uses my keep, keep is a mess. Yeah. It, at the top of it right now. Oh, I have a to do thing in no in here. Oh, God, when was this from? It says no dates oil <laughs> change, return Amazon, mic cable, cookbook, curtains, disc golf tracker. That's one note in keep. So those are, th 
None of them are okay. checked. I, off. Was gonna say, I did all of these. The fact that that exists, you didn't know you did it. And it's and pinned. You've done all those things anyway. And it's pinned. You this have is, done those things? This is not. I did all of those. Oh, and then there's housework underneath. Front light, door light. Should we check the oil on your car before you leave today? <laughs> yeah, oven right. light, shells and office. I did all of these as well. Huh. That and is also so a you, pinned. Oh, no, like, wait. I checked two of these off. Basement, stair light, bathroom light. Checked off. Now I'm imagining you're like a sleep productivity expert. <laughs> like you just like sleepwalk into your bathroom and just start writing down to do's that you're never gonna see. I do again. so I do use keep a lot. Yeah, other than that is like a big list of things that I definitely don't need. And then uh my AeroPress coffee recipe. Okay. Very important to be Stare in the to keep with. around. Yeah. Yeah. Keep is There's, interesting. So you you would say you remembered to do those things despite not using keep to remember them. Um, maybe you just, no, no, I go back to them. I just, for some reason, don't check them off. My, my oldest note is a grocery list, which is, yeah. Did you check it when you were in the grocery store? There's a lot of links in it for some reason. (laughs) Okay. And then, (laughs) yeah, my grocery list for my Christmas ham. Okay. Sorry. I don't want to go too deep into that, but (laughs) I just want people to understand how messed up my keeps. There's some notes stuff in here too. Okay. I'm going to start with one. That I think is please. This is the one that I've told you about that I come back to all the time. It's tick tick. Okay. This is a to do list app at its core, and on the fringe, on the outsides, which you never have to get into, are things like a calendar, things like notes, things like shared lists, habit tracker. You never habit tracker. I use a lot of them. You don't have to touch them. You can just use it as a list of tasks. But it is available inside of tick tick. Yes. You say, okay. Exactly. You don't have to use it. Okay. It's multi-platform, so I have it on my Mac, I have it on my Android phone, I have it on my iPhone and my Windows computer, and there's a web app, and it's all great. Um, but the thing that it will just basically do is take over what you do with Keep and the Alarm app, which is every okay. time you have a task you need to remember to do, instead of opening the Alarm app and setting a time, you open Keep and either write down, remind me to take the trash out tomorrow afternoon, and it will know based on what you're typing when to remind you. Or you can just go through the picker, like mm-hmm. David said, and, and pick the exact time you want the notification and get it then. Okay. But it's at its core, it's a solidly good-looking, very functional, multi-platform task app. Okay. I think that's my number one candidate that I keep coming back to. Haven't found any major flaws with yet. I'll leave that. Can I, when you guys are pitching this, can I ask you what widgets are available for it Absolutely. and how I can see things? Are... Because it is also something I'm realizing. I am a very, like... I like my home screen to be super clean. Exactly. And that's in some part of me thinks about this is like, I kind of want it as a widget here, maybe as a separate page on the side, that would just be the full page in there rather than going into an app every time. Because oh, I see. I've but, become a big believer in that exact strategy. I think the, like have it one swipe away and have it huge. I think has for me at least has been I really think, helpful. Cause having it yell at you about your tasks all day is actually no, not no, no, no. And I do you. not like, like, I like this to be clean and just yeah. like peaceful. Nice and then, yeah. thank you very much. Um, and then, I yeah, maybe one swipe away. I'm also very, I do not like any swipes on it at all. So okay. this is a big step for me, agreeing that I might be able to add a second screen mm-hmm. with its two app. Yeah. Your intervention is working. So it has. We only want to add one screen. One screen, one screen. That's yeah. it. And Don't you be... dare ask for two. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of ways to jump into Tick Tick that I obviously like just having the icon on your home screen is one way. And then yeah. it just has a big plus button for you to start adding a task. Okay. There's also the widget, which is a list of your tasks that just lives on your home screen. And then a little plus button in the corner. So if you just hit the plus, okay. you jump right into adding a task. So okay. that's like convenient. Yeah. Um, on the iPhone, even, you can set the action button to be just start letting me type a new task, right. which I had for okay. a while. Uh, so there are there are various levels of uh, friction. I think the point of this is to be as frictionless as possible. Correct. So then my question is, does it have the natural language that yes. David yes. was talking about before? Yes. And it's it's. I'm good. gonna put that out. That it's, might be a non negotiable already. I think I honestly okay. think it should be. Okay. I think every to do list app needs it. And whenever I switch to one, I don't know if this is your experience too, but. Uh, Whenever I switch to one that doesn't have it, the reason I bail is because I spend way too much time tapping on the calendar picker. dates. Yeah. Yeah. So I recently tried Superlist, which I'm not mm-hmm. going to recommend. And it just has a little bit too much friction for it's the picker, it's the adding a new task, it's the couple extra clicks. Yep. Superlist is like beautiful and it's full of good ideas gorgeous. and just not quite ready. Yeah. It's one dot. Here's one. the question. Yeah. 
all of these seem to be beautiful and and like no okay no, cool that's no that's what i was gonna ask <laughs> no. it seems because like we always talk about it and you guys mentioned in the beginning when a new one of these calendar to do apps launches it feels like they're putting 50 percent of the effort into the like marketing and launching and the beautiful website oh, and everything yeah so like i'm just assuming most of these look good i would it's love to see some lot. bad examples at some There's point so in this many. episode I it's gotten a lot to. better i will say okay. there has been uh a definite move toward what if the app looked nice like for a <laughs> long time because if you think about it right a lot of these apps are for people who like yeah want fair. to do productivity mm -hmm. and those people want to see tons of metadata and they have priorities and they have tags and they have okay. filters and they have all this stuff and for those people having lots of information shoved at your face is useful okay. but if you're just like i want to write a thing down and i want you to tell mm -hmm. me about it when i have to do it it ends up just being super overwrought yeah. but a lot of these apps have gotten better at pulling some of that stuff okay. out of the interface yeah. over time cool yeah i don't need to 10x anything let's just go 2x right yeah, now sure. i don't need no sigma grind set anything <laughs> sure so let's i think that will be my the para method is for okay. another podcast yeah <laughs> we'll leave the eisenhower matrix out of this <laughs> Yes. Okay. The next episode, um, we're doing my original theory where I'm locking you two in this room and you have to both agree on which app you're using. That would take forever. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. Hey, we're going to take a quick break, but after this, we'll be right back with David Pierce giving his recommendation to Andrew. Uh, so my recommendation, which I actually think I switched between Tick Tick, which I like for a lot of reasons, uh, and this app, which is Todoist, constantly. I think, generally speaking, these are the two sort of most mainstream yeah. cross-platform okay. to-do list apps. Uh, Todoist has awesome language processing. Uh, it's a super straightforward, simple app. It, it, again, has a lot of the like extra powerful stuff if you want to use it, and filters and projects and subtasks okay. and all this stuff. But uh, you fundamentally can just make it a list of tasks. And the reason I like Todoist is that it integrates out much better than TickTick. -Tick. Okay. Like, TickTick -Tick really wants you to use the TickTick -Tick app. But Todoist, you can you can two-way sync with your Google Calendar, so you can okay. see your tasks in the Calendar app. So if you're somebody who like lives in your Calendar grid, you can still see your task there. Mm -hmm. You can sync it to a bunch of other apps, so it'll pull stuff in, it'll send stuff out. Like it's It thinks of itself as kind of a tasks platform. And as somebody okay. who, my problem has always been, I'm just not necessarily as reliable as I need to about like looking at my app. Uh, mm -hmm. And so A, I rely on reminders a lot. If I okay. have a thing that needs to get done, I just make my phone tell me to do it. Um, but also I do look at my calendar all day. So having something I can see in my yeah. calendar is very important. Yeah. And the reason I end up leaving TickTick every time I leave TickTick is that TickTick's calendar, which is in TickTick, which is a good idea. Like I like the idea of having the calendar next to the tasks in the same app. TickTick's calendar is just not very good. It's not very good. You can't add calendar events from right. TickTick. Tick. It only brings in calendar events. It doesn't right. let you make new ones. Yeah. It's it's a it's a that read seems... only calendar essentially. Okay. So you can sort of yeah. map it next to your tasks, and you can put and tasks can see, on the calendar. Okay. But even that still only lives in TickTick. Tick. So you have to kind of be in its oh. universe. There's a weird hack. You can export your tasks back out to Google Calendar and subscribe to that Google Calendar so that when you make a task, <laughs> I was gonna say, press that button. I need that button. <laughs> and if you if you just have a day, it makes it an all day event, which is not great. Okay. But if you put, slide it to the calendar, it makes it a event on a Google Calendar. So yeah, oh. okay. It's a couple steps to make it work. But yeah, but tick tick. Directly. If you're listening, fix that. <laughs> make that easier, just make please. that better. Here's yes. a question: When you're doing either of these in the Google Calendar, there's a way to differentiate if it's going into my work calendar versus personal calendar yep okay. yeah so it can you're... sometimes be a little hacky uh, most of them will let you you set a default and okay. by yeah. default it'll go to that and then you can move it but you kind of have to explicitly move it most of the time okay i think i also would probably be if i'm being honest this to-do app would be most of my personal things because i'm pretty good at with notion and google yeah. calendar and what mark has and just mark has and i talking every morning and knowing what we need like yeah. my job is to know what the hell we're doing every week so like <laughs> i kind of have to so if it was defaulting to all my personal stuff and then i still have my google calendar and stuff that's how i, I think we'd be set pretty up and that, that works pretty well okay all cool. of my tasks just dump onto my personal gmail Perfect. calendar i think that's good and i have my personal reminders coming to my watch in my calendar so that would be really helpful i think okay yeah cool both of these are free and with some level of premium features if yeah. you really find you need the specific sure. thing or a ton of extra features or if they're watching this episode 
<laughs> or that, you know, but either they're pretty cheap, three, four, five bucks a month. Cool. So, but I think actually for what you're describing, which is basically a list of tasks with probably reminders free. and dates, it's, it's probably both will probably be free. Cool. Yeah. Here, you know, this might be something to think about in the premium section. Do you ever like you tell yourself you want to start doing something? I feel like this always happens with like going to the gym. The thing that motivates you is like, I need to spend money on something that's going to make me do this. So it's like buying a new thing of protein or like a new pair of running shoes. It's like, that is the thing that's mm. motivating me oh. to start running. Yeah. So maybe I just need to buy some premium and be like, yeah, For I already me, threw some investment. money at it. <laughs> For me, I like, I'll spend two hours in an afternoon getting all of my stuff into it. And I'm like, all right, I have to use it now. Fair, that's <laughs> that's super fair too. That's still investment into it. I also think for you, it's literally like, uh, we're gonna put it on your home screen and that's gonna feel big in yeah, a way that's gonna true. make you use Second it. screen. Set right. Ch chill, you're, David. You're right. I, chill. I would never. <laughs> Big widget. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the la so the last one that we were sort of talking about earlier is I, I put this at the bottom of the list, but could possibly be a good idea. Just based on the fact that you use Google Calendar and you have an Android phone and you use the browser for Google Calendar mm -hmm. and you use Gmail. So Google has this thing, and we never know how long Google things are gonna last. So <laughs> this is the asterisk yeah. on top of all of this, but okay. Google has this thing where it's fairly good at giving you tasks um, separately, but integrated with the rest of your things. So let's say, so I think it can show up next to Gmail. Right? Yeah, so it can. you can have basically your full list of tasks in like the right sidebar of your Google Calendar and your Gmail, and I think even oh. your Drive, yeah. as just it sort of follows you around all the Google products. Yeah. But then so, you can drag stuff onto the calendar. Yes. If you set up, like if you use Google Assistant to set a reminder, uh -huh. it'll show up in tasks and on your calendar. Uh, yeah. there, this is, I mean, again, this is all in theory. Yeah. <laughs> Google's <laughs> reminder product is the worst it's organizational bad. nightmare of all time. Uh, but it is like very slowly coming back towards the thing okay. it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's still a standalone app for it, right? Wait, did you there tell is. me the name of this and I missed? It's, or Google, you, tasks. it's, Google, tasks, it's Google Tasks. Which you okay. can have the Google Tasks app. Okay. But again, if you like have Gmail or the calendar open on your desktop, then it's just always sitting over there ready to add a task from an email or a calendar event or vice versa. That sounds like something that would be good as like an in-between of if I picked TickTick -tick or Todoist, if Google Tasks could just take everything from that and then also throw it at the side of my Gmail. That's everything. I mean, that's the dream. Yeah. That is truly the dream. And I will tell you the the dream for me with Google Tasks would be if it also integrated with Keep. And so like part of what I want to recommend <laughs> Who for to you think? <laughs> is just to dump all of your stuff into Keep, right? And you have you have a list of tasks mm -hmm. and you, it, it should, you say, you know, remind me to do whatever at 9 p.m. And it'll just put a Keep note with a reminder that's also in Google Tasks and also in Google Calendar. Incredibly obvious, doesn't work. I can't believe they don't. Completely non-existent. That. They, they must not even talk to each other, those no. teams. It's, yeah. It's I'm convinced that Google is not aware of all of the products. That uh, it no. <laughs> Too many built-ins, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I do think there is a there is a version of what you're describing that you can do pretty successfully, mostly inside of your calendar. Uh, again, I think it, it time stamps things in a way that I don't think you're going to love all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not good at natural language processing in the same way. Okay. Google Calendar has a little bit of it, especially on mobile. Uh, you can use apps like Fantastical, which is a Mac and iOS only app, is very good at natural language processing, okay. but useless to you on some of these other platforms. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> so like, I think it's not crazy to say your calendar can just be the place for all of this stuff. Uh -huh. And I know a lot of people who use like all day events as their task list. Mm -hmm. To me, just the visual clutter of that yeah. Yeah, gives Th me itchy feelings. This is a question I was gonna ask. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, my calendar feels pretty intense sometimes, but is it, be I I'd like to see how both of you look at your calendar because I use is weekly. my, you use weekly? Sam. Yeah. Now I don't know. I think Even I, on mobile do you use weekly? Well, I can't fit enough. I think it's five days. Okay, I I've, do, I have a list. Like I, I just do the pure like oh, schedule list on because the list goes too long. Like my widget is the list, but uh -huh. a lot of times the list goes off of like this is one day, so I can't. Yeah, can I see? It doesn't work. Uh, mobile because I'm realizing how I look at mine, and I do not think it's the right way of doing it. Like that. This okay. is this is seven days. Oh, do you have yours as the the day the single day of oh. month? Those are all all day events, right? Uh, no, these are all these are all work events. So these are all the ones oh, we I put see. in. But it's just the month. So okay. like it's very little. So and I, I use that occasionally okay. because it's nice to sort of pull out and be like, okay, what free days do I have this yeah. month or whatever? But as a general None. way to sort of manage my days, that just feels it's like hard. And then like getting into it 
then it gets a little more confusing. I guess that's not too bad. I live in, so Cron, the app that is now Notion Calendar, mm -hmm. uh, okay. which I think is what you're using. It is. Um, on mobile defaults to, I think, a three-day view. That sounds Which nice. is really nice. Yeah. yeah. I actually like it a lot. It's yeah. funny. I downloaded Notion Calendar on my my Mac, and then I realized I never click it. The only thing I feel like it's good for is the like top task the notification. here, like, like whatever that. the next one is. And yeah. then I'm like, I always, I'm like, oh, I don't have that. Open it, minimize it immediately, and then just keep it for that part. <laughs> it of does there. always mm -hmm. show what your next task is it's and nice. how long it is till your next yeah. event, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm learning some tips and tricks here as well. Yeah, there's, for the there are I use. infinite tech tips and tricks. Any one of these apps, you can find dozens of YouTube videos on like how to optimize your workflow and how to take the most advantage of all these Wh features that why it Why watch those when I have YouTube right here? Yeah, I, <laughs> this is, I think you can just drive into the core functions of it and be totally leveled up. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually think in general, the mistake I make too often is I watch all those videos and I read all the things and I end up spending all of this time creating this beautiful, elaborate system where everything is in its right place and everything is perfect. And then I've made it way too much work for myself to actually do anything. Yeah. So then I go find something else that doesn't have any of that going for me and it's just a list of stuff. And it turns out that's what I actually need. Yeah. That's it. So just start with the list of stuff. Do either of you find yourself not getting to your to-do things because you're too busy putting them on your That's why it's your apps trade. and yeah, change it like yeah. So yeah. you're literally setting up what you need to do for the day where you're like, I want to do it in this new app. And then the day's over and you're like, I didn't do any yeah. of the things. <laughs> Unfortunately, that has happened. We are definitely okay. all the tasks around. <laughs> but, yeah. but it looks real pretty. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess that's that's the idea is the as frictionless and uh straightforward as it can possibly be is a win. Mm-hmm. I have one last question for you. You've seen these these new like AI hardware pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Rabbit or the AI Pin. Do you think that this has any merit as maybe a possible next level future version of like task management? Like if in theory you could just tell your AI thing, remind me to do the thing at this time, and it takes all your natural language and just goes, all right, I'll remember it and reminds you whenever. Could that be real or is that am I just in fantasy? Land? I think that could totally be real. And actually, the first version of that, which is basically just like a much simpler way to dump stuff into my task system, yeah. is not hard, right? Like all we're missing right now is the fact that most of the time to do it, you have to get out your phone and unlock it yeah. and open an app and press a button. Right. And if you can shortcut all of that, like it's one yeah. of the things I use the watch for a lot, uh, is just being able to just quickly plug in a reminder. Uh interesting. And like when I'm walking the dog constantly, it's just like, it's literally the only thing I use Siri for at this point That's is really just funny. dumping stuff mm. into reminders. Yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't use Apple reminders except that nothing else plugs into Siri That's successfully. That's exactly why I use uh, the shopping list in Keep. Oh, that's smart. The that's thing, what I should start doing. The only thing that I can say, hey, G, add this to my shopping list, it just dumps it in keep every time. And I wish I could put it in super list or tick tick, but yeah. like I need the frictionless, like yell across the room thing because I'm totally. always doing something. Totally. That's the same thing. But I think the idea of dedicated hardware that can do that is super enticing. And then if you add on the idea of it being much smarter, like one of the things the, the rabbit folks promised that they can do is you can point the camera at something mm -hmm. and be like, you know, watch me remind me to buy this oh, on Amazon in okay. a week, and it'll it it sh like in theory these things will be able to like dump the right Amazon link into your to do list to buy a week That's from now. Uh, yeah. All of that is like sitting there, and I think we'll get there eventually. Mm -hmm. I hope so. But right now, I found uh, every time I try, I then do it, and I have to go open the app to make sure that it did it was, it right. Yeah, right. And I've now just done all the same work I, I would have done anyway. anyway. <laughs> right. I feel yeah. like even when you like. When it starts doing it correctly, the anxiety of did that do that correctly? A hundred. Oh, like just like I know. And the thing is, <laughs> well, I need to look. Uh, I need to. And make the sure. thing is, is with any system like this, if you don't trust it completely, it's yeah, a yeah, waste yeah. of your time. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. There's some amount of uh, I would like the ideal would be I can just have a Google Assistant plug-in where I can just ask the assistant to just add a task and it adds it to whatever app I've decided I'm using. Right, but instead you have to be like, hey, G, talk to Todoist. Yeah, I'm like, no, I don't want so that. You, extra. Yeah. And that, so you say when you're doing, because I do not add reminders through Google Assistant at all, right. but I should because in Android Auto, when half of my ideas come out on the drive home, yeah. that's the way... That's the golden that's the rule of good ideas, by the way. You only get them when it's impossible. That was my other right thing. Now. How many, what is the easiest way to set a reminder for something when I am half asleep in yeah. bed 
in um, the shower or like away from all of your tech and you need to write something down. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, if I had Google answer, Assistant sounds like the best. I think Assistant's but, the right answer. And it throws yeah. it into keep, you're saying? Or, It'll throw or, it into or, Google or, Tasks. Google ta- yeah. If you ask oh, it to okay. remind you to do something, it's going to make a task, um, which will actually give it a date and everything, which is cool. But I don't, that's the thing is I don't use Google Tasks, yeah. so I don't get to take advantage of that frictionless experience. I just opened Google's support page explaining the difference between tasks and keep and where your reminders go. And it's like 12,000 words long, like <laughs> which just tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. But I think, I mean, and truthfully, you're getting most of the reminders that you're talking about through your alarm app on your phone. So to the extent that you're just using Assistant to do them anyway. The yeah. worst case scenario is your phone will remind you anyway. So you've you're kind yeah. of netting out the same Fair. way with just like slightly easier input. But I think that the challenge with that is if you have a thing you need to do regularly. Yeah. That that's a really good system for like simple one off things mm-hmm. that you're like I just need to remember to switch the laundry in 45 minutes. This is not like an interesting task that you either need to remember sure. or do again. Mm-hmm. Voice assistant reminders, perfect. Best okay. possible system for that. Yeah. Uh, but like Ironically, for a thing you have to do every week, your alarm system is actually better than that. <laughs> Fortunately. <laughs> because the other way to do it is then you'd have to tell Assistant to do it and then go find the thing in Google Tasks yeah. and add the recurring to add it. The recurring. And that's just a mess. Wow, that's so you can't just say, hey, G, add a Monday recurring. You can add it to your calendar oh, to your ca- every okay. Monday. But at least in my experience so far, you cannot add oh, a task okay. with any of that sub information. Yeah to tasks <laughs> it's unfortunate it would be yeah. so great again if google reminded themselves a few times of the fact that they own this stuff they could probably do I it but, if uh, google just set an alarm yeah, reminder an alarm. to tell them that yeah. they owned all of these different companies yeah recurring they have like 50 alarms of like remember you have this product we own then there's they have too many alarms cooked up for like delete Google Hangouts in one month or kill this it's app. It's because somebody reminded them it exists and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> We're paying <laughs> for that, that stuff? too? Yeah. Well, that's, I think, I think we've left on, on a good place. I want to throw it apps. to one person. Yeah. Adam, do you have any suggestions or things to add as someone else who is in the, the realm of having your life together or whatever you want to call it well as someone that's in like seven different apps right now i would argue i do not have my life together you know what i'm figuring out you guys have your life together except for in the to-do apps it seems like (laughs) that's where it is totally tearing you apart i have nine different reminders coming from the same for the same i had uh I had a, this on my calendar that we were doing this and no fewer than five apps yeah. reminded me that this was happening this morning. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My suggestion would be try to keep it as simple as possible. So I would say just lean into the Google system for now. because so you, you don't think Google Tasks? Interesting. Google Tasks, Google Calendar. Because you don't leave Android like ever. You've never had an iPhone. So like, no. my problem with a lot of the Google stuff is, or at least the Apple stuff in particular, like notes and reminders, is it doesn't leave Apple. So yeah. that's it. But Google works everywhere. So you could just do things in Google and have it pop up places. And even like emails, you can snooze for later or things like that. Like yeah. you don't have to get into the super crazy features. As long as you have the browser tab open, yeah. basically. And Keep is great for dumping stuff in, but then it also has a lot of power features where if eventually you get down, you can start tagging things and filtering and all that stuff. But you don't have to even do that. Yeah. <laughs> I come back to that like every couple months because I remember you wrote an article once a while ago about how to make Google just like the system. Mm-hmm. And it it's a dream I've been trying to have come true for so long. It's so close. I it's mean, this, so is, close. this is the thing that I experience with every one of these apps and systems is in so many cases, all the pieces are there. It's like it has all the features that I need around. Mm-hmm. They're just put together <laughs> In slightly wrong ways, or this it's is... missing one thing that turns out to be really important to me. Yeah. Uh, and and this is why, again, I come back to, like, don't try to use any of these systems. Mm-hmm. Just make a list of stuff. Uh, and, like, for me, I, I had a long run of using Todoist, like, to its fullest extent. Like, mm-hmm. oh, man, the system that I had. Mm-hmm. And that was awful. And I just <laughs> deleted all of that, and I went back to all of my tasks live in the inbox, and they have dates on them. The end. Wow, you don't have a... You don't separate your tasks into I don't anymore. sub lists. I have stopped because for me it was like if I if I have to click into I do have a separate list for my shopping list. That's the only one that's separate. Sure. But when I had more things to open and check, I just wouldn't. Hmm. And so yeah. I was like, oh, I have a list of personal finance tasks that I haven't checked in eight months. Like yeah. it's just this is just not useful. That's my and notion. Fair. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, and so I think getting into a position where you just have the fewest possible number of things to check mm -hmm. is the right place to start. And then eventually if you're like, oh, I have all this stuff yeah. I need to put somewhere else so I can manage it, that's actually a good problem to have. Yeah. I think my number one tip for myself is I give everything a date. Everything gets a date. So I don't have to check anything. I just will always get, and whenever I open the new app, I just look at what's today and I'll just go through today. And if I finish today, I'll look at tomorrow, but I always just have, everything always gets a date. So if there's recurring tasks, like I have maintenance tasks for appliances mm -hmm. and stuff, it always gets a date. That's the- It's just always the date it has to be done yeah. or the date it has to be done by the or date like the I date you feel like doing it or the date it has to be done by everything always has a date that i have to do it okay so so you're not a get this done by friday you're like on monday you're like i am calling the dishwasher repairman on yes. wednesday i always set. i never set deadlines i always set dates to do things based on if there is something where like you're saying i have to do something by friday yeah before i even write it down i think how long is that going to take me to do i'm going to write the date down of when i need to do it to get it done by that time Okay. And so it'll show. So if I find, if I need to make a call, that's a one day thing. But if it's a project, then I'll write down a Monday task. Do I feel like this is a level of life planning Andrew is not comfortable. <laughs> no, with. I you was know. just thinking. I am, and like how I said, I worked before. I need a, I need this done by Friday. Right. So like when I hit the area, and it needs to just like be but like, hey, this takes... is coming up, and then when I get to that point of less hecticness of like being productive, it's like okay, I do that and I tap it off, and yeah, Friday now. The, it's done yeah wow yeah. i can have things done before the day they need to be done by yeah it's a magical I will say world at some point <laughs> the, the onus does remain on you to do those things hey yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as someone who continues to do things just five minutes before they're due uh even though i have a lovely to-do list it but it probably feels problem. sick to but check it, it off after the thing for me is that that feeling of uh for me it's often like with, with a baby it's like right after the kid goes to bed and it's like okay i have i have a couple of hours i'm gonna like put on a show or a movie like what do i need to do and yeah. i could either sit there and sort of rack my brain and try to think about it or i could just open an app and be like oh here's all the stuff sitting here waiting for me yep. because what i find is when i don't make that kind of list i end up doing all of the sort of low stakes not very important kind of irrelevant stuff mm -hmm. like oh i'm gonna go like organize one of the folders of my email like <laughs> The promotion section of my Gmail is like not an important <laughs> thing to do right from now. everything. Yeah. Right. But that's what I'll do because it like feels useful. But instead, if I can go to somewhere and be like, oh, what do I actually care about getting done right now? Like uh -huh. having that list in front of me yeah. feels really good. Yeah. that's And the whole like, because there definitely is that sense right now of, oh, Lane just went down for a nap and I know she's going to have another nap later. What can I get done during this one? And what can I get done during that one? Or can I just hang out for this one? Because that was exhausting. Right. And then that nap later i know i can get these things done i will say yeah. the people who love time blocking uh and time boxing and the idea of like give everything a time love it for that exact reason because then you can say i'm gonna do all this and then for this one hour block i am just gonna screw off and play video games and oh, i don't have man. to feel bad about it because everything else i need to do has yeah. a has a job already. it's a blank slot on the calendar right. I'm, I'm not a time blocker if i ever write down a, in my I calendar have fun i'm gonna be like I've lost. I have drive. <laughs> who is this monster? <laughs> yeah. this I like did that. actually notice that the other day. You have like drive home. And it's I was because like, I know oh, I wow. can't do other things during that block. Okay. So like I have Fit, drive that's super home fair. Okay. From for like a 45 minute block. Because if I have like something to do, I better not schedule it for that time or I will no longer have right. time to drive home. It's bad so. that in my eyes you were like that day doesn't have drive home and you're standing in the studio and you're like, <laughs> what's, how do I get home? It didn't tell me where to go. <laughs> the internet was it down. It does feel like that sometimes. Yeah. No, I, that's, that's the purpose of my blocking is to give like purpose. to. That's super time. fair. Um, yeah. Th this kind of reminds me of the way you guys are describing all these different ones and how like so many of them have so much, but there's just this one thing. I feel like this is the same with mirrorless cameras, and we talk about this all the time. Just every time a mirrorless camera comes out, you're like, uh -oh. this is going to be perfect. It, they had one problem last model, and they're going to fix it. Yeah. Like, AK overheating, they've got it. They're like, we fixed AK overheating. And you're like, can you flip that screen out? Why is the microphone jack right in front of it? Like, yeah. how do you mess one thing up every single time? Yep. And that's yep. reminding me of this right now. Yeah. My last little bonus Every single one of these apps makes a different sound when you check off a task. Oh, and can you play all of them? That might some <laughs> that might make my decision. Sometimes it's really good sound. Tick Tick has good sounds. Tick Tick's got a nice sound. Yeah. 
Superlist has a nice sound. Uh, and Superlist has a little like scribbly animation when you cross really? out a task. It's really just, good. Asana so used to good. shove a unicorn across the screen. Wait, let mm-hmm. me make, let me, I'm going to do Which it. is like fun the first three times. <laughs> and you're like, can we get the unicorn out of here? Like, I have other yeah, stuff to do. Yeah, it takes too much time. It yeah. takes too much time. All right, this is Superlist. It's a long sound. Here's a Tick Tick. That one's customizable. Ooh. There's several sounds yeah. in Tick Tick. I use that same one though. It's like that's it does, pretty. It feels like it's kind of a yeah, done. I have accomplished something. I did the thing. All right. Anyway. All right. I think the th- the three options I've written down because of the, the ones you gave me and I kind of ignored most of the other ones is Tick Tick, To Doist, and Google Tasks. Perfect. Good I do filter. think those are the ones that are. I think that's start. right. Yeah. I think I'm gonna start with Google Tasks, okay. even though the hovering over of Google might just kill this at any moment is a little worrisome. It just seems say, the most simple, and I think starting there is a good. I feel pretty good about the immediate future of Google Tasks. Like, okay. would I bet on it being here in a decade? No. Would I bet on anything Google does being here in a decade? <laughs> no. But Google has, if anything, really reinvested in making this a thing that makes sense. Okay. Uh, and there are a lot of interesting business reasons for Google to care about this, but uh, also it has very slowly started to do the work on Google Tasks. Uh, it launched it like five years ago and then literally basically forgot about it for four years. Didn't they, but, they killed it and then they it came back inside of Gmail or something? Yeah, I mean, it's, weird it's, like it's all deranged. <laughs> yeah. It was like it had, it had a dedicated app and then it didn't and then it was a really ugly web app that you could only find with a sneaky URL. But, yeah. but now <laughs> it, it, is, it is beginning to make sense and I, I'm pretty confident that Google at least is going to keep it around as a thing for a while. Okay, yeah. So I think I'm going to start with Google Tasks. It seems the simplest. It also seems like something that very quickly when I'm at work I can start getting myself used to Mm -hmm. and all that and then maybe expanding into my personal life more often which is where I ultimately want it and I think use that but Tick Tick and To Do is both look pretty awesome and I think I want to graduate to those Mm, potentially (laughs) and then here we go baby hey listen I finished my school schooling and I never look back at grad work or anything like that. I graduate and I never look back. Okay, so we are going that's to good. graduate to this new one and then that is going so to be here's, it. So here's how I would tell you to make that decision. Sure. F- download Google Tasks to your phone. Okay. And then see which app you use more, Google Calendar or Google Tasks. Okay. Because you can add a Google Task in Google Calendar. Okay. Uh, the mobile Google Calendar app is actually a pretty full-featured Google Tasks app also. Okay. Uh, so you can have both in place. And if you find yourself being like, oh, what I really like to do is look at the list of tasks, you will lean more towards tick tick, I think. Okay. But if you find yourself saying, oh, I like looking at my calendar with my tasks kind of around, Mm -hmm. you'll want to be in more of a to-doist place where it can pull stuff back out into your calendar and that kind of thing. Cool. I like that. But I I think it's like, for me, the interface of being able to open it up and be like, here's a list of all the stuff that I need to do is great. That's and I think that's where you'll lean to TickTick. Tick. Okay, cool. I, like just looking at the UIs of both of these, I think I like the look of TickTick Tick more, but Todoist feels more familiar. It feels very Notion Slacky on like the left side of it. And that seems familiar, which I think seems like a good thing. So I'm kind of in between those. So I think start Google Tasks. But I wouldn't doubt if by next week I've already picked one of them, but I'd way too much pressure to pick by the end of the show, which yeah. I thought I was going to have to do, but you were just going to go out into it. So maybe no, no, I should have no, just let that happen. But the time I want th- I want a good payoff at the I end of this I do demand episode. the check-in, though. Sure. We're going to need at some point we will. in the coming weeks. I I'd know how, say, this how about at some point in the next <laughs> four alarm. months? No, 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 no alarm. Okay. You guys have to call David and have him surprise on the Waveform podcast to check in on me. Oh, I love this. Live, okay. but yeah. I don't know it's coming. Anytime. Wait, let me make a task real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Set an alarm. <laughs> I like that. Cool. Yeah, right. I think that's the best way to check up because then I won't, then I can't be like, oh, David's calling tomorrow. Let me make a bunch of yeah. this. No, <laughs> me... I, yeah, I love okay, this. Cool. Okay, I'm in. Okay, surprise check in. Okay, Perfect. now what's your notes app? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Should what? Should we talk about email apps? <laughs> No, that I was I was I almost went there. And I was like, this is unnecessary. We don't no. need to do this. I do. You, you use Superhuman. I do use Superhuman. I every time I even consider talking about it on the podcast, I'm like, it's a thirty dollar month email app. How can I even begin to recommend it to anyone? Like, no one would. I wouldn't recommend no it to most people. To be honest, yeah. it is sort of preposterous. But it runs my life so. It's just so fast. It's really and, good. and yeah, I like it very much. But also, uh, I have used every single email app that exists, and yeah. it's. Uh, if anything, even more chaotic than to-do list apps. The but the problem like with most of them is their search sucks, so I stopped using them for the most oh, part. And I ended yeah. up I end up back on Gmail 
or MimeStream, which is a Mac app for Gmail that's very good, uh, or Superhuman, which also has good search. Good search, yeah. I, I want to spend as little time in Gmail as possible, so my main Gmail, my main email goal tends to be just like get to zero and leave mm -hmm. as fast as possible. Select all. Those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's another That's another episode. That's the dream. Um, okay, David, how fast oh can you type the alphabet? A through Z. In order. Perfect. We'll find what? out. We have a, I have no a idea. We have a challenge for it. You don't even have to guess. We can just find out right now. Could it be? Like, <laughs> is it eight seconds? That would be a pretty decent time. Uh, that, might, that might even be on our leaderboard of people we've timed typing oh, yeah. the alphabet. We'll give you a. I'll give you a URL right now. Okay. What would you feel more comfortable typing on? Your laptop keyboard. We have you a mechanical have a keyboard. We have like a magic keyboard. I can't do mechanical keyboards. Okay. It just feel, I just, no, that's fine. We so we do this for all our guests, and we have a leaderboard. And the number one on the leaderboard right now is Tom Scott, who requested to go get his Dell laptop that he writes all his scripts on. Wow! And then he crushed it. Proceeded to dominate. He's yeah. extremely competitive, apparently. So I will say, just to immediately explain why I'm going to do poorly at this, uh, it is very hard. It see, it actually seems hard. It's I'm super here, hard. Like, have I ever typed the alphabet? No. Uh, I I use it too many keyboards at this point, which I think has I made me bad at it. You use too many keyboards, but you don't like mechanical keyboards. What keyboards are you I using? Have, I have a Logitech Craft yeah. keyboard that is the one I use at like my home base. Okay. Uh, I have a Surface Book and I have a MacBook Air, which have okay. obviously their own keyboards. Mm -hmm. uh, and occasionally, I would say like four times a year, I try to become a mechanical keyboard person. I'm there think, for you. I think when you the do world it. of it is very cool. I it think there's is. lots of interesting stuff going on. I think the companies are up to stuff. I like the technology. I want to be able to like talk about cherry switches and know what that <laughs> no is. No one gives a shit about those uh, anymore. <laughs> but I just there's something about the way that it feels. I also have found sure. that I type constantly while I'm in meetings with people, and it's super helpful that people can't hear me doing that. That's fine. Huge. Not to dive too deep into that, but there are low profiles getting super popular and silent switches are becoming super popular. So you can still get all the benefits and cool feel and all that while not being a le annoying. Okay, um, silent switches I could very much get behind yeah. because the everybody's like, oh, I love the noise. I'm like, I don't like the noise. Uh, the the, noise the like number one negative comment on the mechanical keyboard switch video I did is like, if you were in my office, I would hate you. And it's like, yeah. it was just a fun video, man. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> but yes, that is a serious concern. How many attempts do I get at this? Three. So you will get three attempts. I get three attempts. Yes. Okay. When you type, it'll show it, the letters highlighting above it. Um, if you miss a letter, it won't continue. You have to hit the letter before you can go to the next one. And just don't hit enter at the end because that resets it if you're trying to like the website, if you just want to like keep practicing over I'm like and over. Nervous. Every it's it's nervous. This is really stressing me it's out more than I expected. Mission well, here, accomplished. Do you want this might make you more or less nervous? Do you want to see the leaderboard now or after? After. Okay. All right. Do you want to count him down, Marquez? Oh, he's going. Oh, he started already. Oh, I didn't type in the what? That's fine. It's, just start over. It doesn't count in there. It's just it practice. Count. Okay. Yeah. That was like two seconds, just in case you. <laughs> oh, okay. Remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I timed myself <laughs> so fast. Also, just discovered. I don't know where the Q key is. It's uh, no one types the alphabet. No, no. like nobody. Yeah, this is a very of, this is also hard thing to realize do. that like. I, I think one of the things that I have also learned in my aspirations of being a mechanical keyboard person is how many different ideas about keyboard layouts there are and that everyone agrees that the QWERTY keyboard is a ridiculous invention, but we're sort of stuck with it because relearning it, it would be like, it's just impossible. not worth it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some fringe keyboards that try some wild things. Yeah. yeah. I was talking to a guy who was like, he built a thing that he basically never has to move his fingers, but the keys are like three things deep. So he has modifier keys on modifier keys. Oh, modifier keys like, are I wild. I 45,000 words a minute, <laughs> but no one on earth can figure out how to use it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, all right, man, congrats. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I just start typing and it'll go, right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah, you don't have to backspace. Five point seven one two. That's seconds. a great first. That is a that's a really very good one. Good first try. Would you like to keep going? I think I can do better than that. Yeah, go for it. We'll, we're taking I your got best a score in zero point zero 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 <laughs> seconds. So that's pretty good. That's <laughs> unfathomable. Wait, now I want to know. Okay, yeah. so it took the. I had a big gap between P and Q. That checks so out. Q's, took a while. Q's where Q's we need hard some work. Key. Yeah, yeah. I'm, this is fascinating. I'm learning so much about myself right now. Okay. Now that's going to mentally stress you out when you get no, no, to we'll pee and have I'm just going to hit you. No, all you need to know, five is a great time. 
It's like a don't, pretty don't good time already. Me. And we're going to take your best. So if you go later, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I want to see in. the leaderboard. You got that. You want to see it now? I do. I do want to see it now. Okay. That might be stressful, but I like that. I, I want to know what I'm up against. No, I think that's... I have a baseline now. Here's your uh, top three. I think right around 10. Wow, three One, and two, three. seconds. But your 5.7 would fall in the top 10. Right okay. around... You'd be... If you stopped now, you'd be right above... My Ra- sole Raleigh goal is to beat Jad Abenrod. Right between <laughs> Jad. Right after Andrew, actually. So you're you're in the top 10. All right. I feel good about that. Yeah. This is a good start. Okay. okay. sure i should look while i'm doing this 8.2 seconds and it took me three seconds to find the u yeah <laughs> i need to look in the time it took this. you to find the u tom, tom scott, scott did, did the entire alphabet <laughs> That's crazy. crazy stat of the day that is wild okay all right i get one more one last one <clears throat> Six point two seconds. My first one. I thought that one felt good. I mean, five still a great number. That one was cleaner, but a little slower. That's. I thought that sounded good, but that is top ten, my friend. I'll take it. That's pretty good. So what? It's right above me. Right above Raleigh. Right behind Andrew. Five point seven. Let's go. Honestly, in the spectrum of like, we've had all the way up to eights and nines, all the way down to threes. That's a that's an above average score. Three point five seconds. That's an absurd score. No one else is even in the threes. Okay, next time I'm gonna bring my own. Custom built mechanical keyboard. Nice. And I'm going to blow my stenographer is going to be in here. <laughs> yeah. No, this is super fun. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Thank we'll, you so much. Uh, thank we'll you guys for Thank you for fixing my life. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> excited to see how this goes. Obviously, we'll see, this yeah. is just the first uh, of many check ins with Andrew to make sure <laughs> he's uh, on the right path. Also, Marquez, recovery. I think we've proved that you and I are both completely out of our minds with these apps, but and we can fine. be reasonable about them in the real world. It's good to know you're out of your mind. Right. So that you don't recommend other people lose their minds. Right. Should totally we fair. both be more like Andrew? Probably. Probably. But is that going to happen? No. Hey, listen. No. If there's just there's that a quick one. That just came out yesterday that I'm so excited to pull. Oh, really? What is it called? <laughs> I don't even remember. Oh, no. It's called like to do t-w-o-d-o or something like that it probably has a gorgeous website oh i'm sure it's lovely. <laughs> oh is this the one that name. you just slide it to be later or earlier yeah the task yeah marquez is the one you showed me it's called to do's oh, oh that's right. yeah, i did yeah. see i linked it in the slack yesterday oh there you go yeah, yeah. okay yeah you all have this a problem marquez is my people yeah. <laughs> all i'm saying is don't be embarrassed to throw something in the alarm app every once in a while you know wake up <laughs> no wake up task. drive home <laughs> drive home task <laughs> Well, either way, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming on Friday, as you guys already know. But thanks for hanging out with us and subscribing and liking and commenting and let us know uh, what else we missed. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Waveform is produced by Adam Alina and Ellis Rovin. We're partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network and our intro outro music was created by Vane Silly.